We're gonna turn now to child care, a huge expense for many new families and a problem that's especially acute in rural Iowa. We have another question from an Iowa Democratic voter. Mayor Buttigieg, this is for you. Tiffany from Clive writes, as a young mom, I had to quit a job I love because childcare costs were taking up two thirds of my income. Many families don't have the option of quitting a job because that little bit of income is needed. That leads to families using whatever care they can find. And sometimes the results are deadly as we've seen in Iowa over the last few years. How will you prioritize accessing quality, affordable childcare in your first 100 days in office? It makes no sense for childcare to cost two thirds of somebody's income. We've got to drive it to 7% or below and zero for those families who are living in poverty. But this is happening to folks at every level of the income spectrum. I meet professionals who uh, sometimes say that they're working in order to be able to afford childcare in order to be able to be working. It makes no sense and it must change and we shouldn't be afraid to put federal dollars into making that a reality. Subsidizing childcare and making sure that we're building up a workforce of people who are paid at a decent level to offer early childhood education uh, as well as child care writ large. We can do that. And until we do, this will be one of the biggest drivers of the gender pay gap. Because when somebody like uh, the, the voter asking the question has to step out of the workforce because of that reason, she is at a disadvantage when she comes back in and that can affect her pay for the rest of her career. Senator Warren, your education plan includes tuition free public college for all but you impose an income limit for free child care. Why do your plans cover everyone for public college, but not child care and early learning? No, actually my plan is universal child care for everyone. It just has some people adding a small payment. But understand this about the plan. I've been there. You know, I remember when I was um, a young mom, I had two little kids and I had my first real university teaching job. I was, it was hard work, I was excited, but it was childcare that nearly brought me down. We went through one childcare after another and it just didn't work. If I hadn't been saved by my Aunt B, I was ready to quit my job. And I think about how many women of my generation just got knocked off the track and never got back on. How many of my daughter's generation get knocked off the track and don't get back on? How many mamas and daddies today are getting knocked off the track and never get back on? I have a two cent wealth tax so that we can cover child care for all of our children and provide universal pre-K for every three-year-old and four-year-old in America and stop exploiting the people who do this valuable work, largely black and brown women. We can raise the wages of every child care worker and preschool teacher in America. That's an investment in our babies. That's an investment in their mamas and their daddies, and it's an investment in our teachers and in our economy. Senator Sanders, will your universal child care program be free for everyone regardless of income? Yeah. Let me pick up on this child care thing. Every psychologist in the world knows zero through four are the most important years of human life, intellectually and emotionally. And yet our current child care system is an embarrassment. It is unaffordable. Child care workers are making wages lower than McDonald's workers. We need to fundamentally change priorities in America. We should not be one of the few countries that does not have universal, high quality, affordable childcare. We should not be one of the only major countries not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. We should not be spending 10, more than the 10 next countries on the military, hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies for the fossil fuel industry, tax breaks for billionaires, and then tell the moms and dads in this country Thank we cannot you, have Senator. high quality Vice President Biden, I'm coming care. to you now. That is wrong. Vice President Biden, infant care is more expensive than in-state public college tuition in more than half the country. Do you support free universal infant care? There should be free universal infant, infant care, but here's the deal. You know, I was a single parent too. When my wife and daughter were killed, my two boys I had to raise. I was a senator, a young senator. I just hadn't been sworn in yet. And I was making $42,000 a year. I commuted every single solitary day to Wilmington, Delaware, over 500 miles a day, uh, excuse me, uh, 250 miles a day, because I could not afford, but for my family, childcare. It was beyond my reach to be able to do it. And that's why there's several things we do. 
when I triple the amount of money for Title I schools, every child three, four, and five years old will, in fact, have full schooling. They'll go to school and after-school programs, which will release some of the burden. Secondly, I think we should have an $8,000 tax credit, which would put 7 million women back to work. They could afford to go to work and still care for their children as an $8,000 tax credit. I also believe that we should, in fact, for people who, in fact, are not able to afford any of infant care to be able to get that care. But Bernie's right. We have to raise the salaries of the people who are doing the care. And I provide for that as well. My time is up, I know, but I'm not going to go over like everybody. Mayor Buttigieg. <laughs> Mayor Buttigieg, higher education is another huge expense for families. You oppose free public college for all because you don't want to make it, quote, free for the kids of millionaires. But lots of public services are available to the kids of rich people, like libraries and public schools. Why do you draw the line at public colleges and universities? Well, it's simple. We expect and hope for everyone to get through 12th grade. It's not the same for college. Now, again, I don't want cost ever to be a barrier to somebody seeking to attend college. And under my plan, it won't be. Matter of fact, for the first 80% of Americans by income, it is free at public colleges. But if you're in that top income bracket, don't get me wrong, I still wish you well. I hope you succeed when you go to college. I just need you to go ahead and pay that tuition because we could be using those dollars for something else. There is a very real choice about what we do with every single taxpayer dollar that we raise. And we need to be using that to support everybody, whether you go to college or not, making sure that Americans can thrive, investing in infrastructure and Something that hasn't come up very much tonight, but deserves a lot of attention, poverty. You know, the Poor People's Campaign is marching on Iowa right now, calling on us to talk about this issue more. They are driven by their faith. I think because even though in politics we're supposed to talk middle class, they know there's no scripture that says, as you've done unto the middle class, so you've done unto me. We gotta be making sure that we target our tax dollars where they will make the biggest difference. And I don't think subsidizing the children of millionaires and billionaires to pay absolutely zero in tuition at public colleges is the best use of those scarce Senator taxpayer Warren. dollars. So look. The way I think we need to do this is we need a wealth tax in America. We need to ask people with fortunes above $50 million to pay more. And that means that the lowliest millionaire that I would tax under this wealth tax would be paying about $19 million in the first year in taxes. If he wants to send his kid to public university, then I'm okay with that. Because what we really need to talk about is the bigger economic picture here. We need to be willing to put a wealth tax in place, to ask those giant corporations that are not paying to pay, because that's how we build an economy. And for those who want to talk about it, bring down the national debt. You do universal child care and you got a lot of mamas who can go to work, a lot of mamas who can finish their education. We make that investment in universal college. We've got Thank a lot you, of people Senator. who Senator finish Senator an education. Yeah, you know, I, this, appreci I appreciate your thoughts, Elizabeth, but I want to step back. I actually think uh, that some of our colleagues who want free college for all aren't actually thinking big enough. I think what we have to look at is how we connect our education system with our economy. Where are our job openings? and what do we need? We are going to have over a million openings for home health care workers that we don't know how to fill in the next 10 years. We are going to have open 100,000 jobs for nursing assistants. We, as my union friends know, we're going to have over 70,000 openings for electricians. We're not going to have a shortage of MBAs. We're going to have a shortage of plumbers. So when we look at that, then we step back. Where should our money go? It should go into K through 12. It should go into free one and two year degrees, like my dad got, like my sister got. Thank you, and Senator then Klobuchar. And we should double the Pell Grants because we're going to need four year Thank degrees. Thank you, Senator Klobuchar. So the money Mr. goes Steyer? where it should go instead of to rich kids going to college. Mr. Steyer, as a billionaire, should your children have been entitled to free public college? No. And let me say this. I was one of the people who talked about a wealth tax a year, almost a year and a half ago. I believe that the income inequality in this country is unbearable, unjust, and unsupportable. 
and the, the redistribution of wealth to the richest Americans from everyone else has to end. And I proposed a wealth tax almost a year and a half ago to start to address it and to raise some of the money that we need. But I want to go beyond this and go back to this question about education, because we're talking a lot about college. But in fact, if you talk about the poor people's campaign, you have to realize that for the youngest kids, they are getting an education that's relative to the taxes in their neighborhoods. We need to redistribute money so every kid has a chance, so we're not legislating inequality for the next generation, and so we actually invest in every single kid, specifically poor kids, specifically black kids, specifically brown kids. We need to start using the money dramatically more for that. We'll be back with more from CNN's Democratic presidential debate live from Des Moines, Iowa. Stay right here.